Princess on the Pillow here. I am here to do a review on Ready to Love, Season 5, Episode 6. It's titled, The Backup Plan. Let's get started. Okay, so, so the men meet up with Tommy. And Tommy told them to take out who they consider is their second option. Um, Tori said he didn't have a backup plan and we all know that because he only likes sabrina so he thinks sabrina is supposed to only like him he's ridiculous so um tommy told them at the end of the week they will meet back up and decide which lady is not ready to love Okay, so Eric says his number one is the Kia. Um, so he meets up with Carmen as his second option. If Carmen knew she was um, his second option, she would be pissed. So anyway, they meet up at a restaurant. And Eric has flowers for her. That was really nice. He even pulls out her chair for her. And even if he's doing it only for the cameras, at least he knows what to do. So I appreciate that he did that. So they flirt with each other a little bit. Um, uh, Carmen says that she is a catch. Eric told Carmen that he was feeling the Kia. And I think he said he and the Kia even kissed. Carmen said it was a desperate move on the Kia's part, and the Kia is a desperate woman. What is the problem with kissing someone you like? <laughs> Carmen said that she is the main course, and the Kia is the appetizer. So, um, Carmen is there sitting there with um Eric. She wipes food off of his mouth, and he said she is a beast in this game. And if she's such a beast, how come she's single and on a dating show? And if she's such a beast in this game, how come she's your number two, not your number one? And so she basically tells him to get rid of all the other women and um, let her be the only one for him. And he tells her that she is on top. So next we see um, Demetrius. He meets up with Tina. And Tina told Demetrius that she is surprised that he wanted to meet up with her because at the beach house, he didn't speak to her at all. And Demetrius said that he'll, he'd own, he'll own that. And Tina said that Demetrius is her type, but at the pool party, he was kissing someone else. Tina told Demetrius that he gave her player vibes I don't understand how he can give her player vibes when she he wasn't talking to anybody else but Sabrina how is that a player how does that how does she get player vibes from that that doesn't make any sense Tina anyway she's giving him the business she's going you know kind of like going off on him a little bit and you know I don't think he likes that type of woman that type of aggressive woman Anyway, she changed the conversation around and tells him that she really likes him. I was looking forward to getting to know him better. And Demetri seemed happy with that. Next, we see Donovan. He has three dates. He has a date with Sabrina, a date with Carmen, and a date with Dikia. The date with Dikia, I thought, was a disaster because she basically told him that if he was there from the beginning, she would have been interested. So she's basically telling, telling him that she's not interested in him. But anyway, she asked him about his type or type of woman he liked. Um, he talked about his body, his body, his love language. Uh, she talked about what she does for a living. And he seems bored to me. He seemed like he was bored with her conversation to me. He said, end of the day, he said, she's definitely a catch. 
but she's not a catch for him. <clears throat> On a date with Sabrina, he asked her what made what made her go through the process. They both talked about their divorce. They talk about having children. He asked if there was a chance for um, a new connection since he saw her kiss Demetrius at the beach party. He wants to know if there's any other, if she can, if she's open for another, any other connections. And she said, absolutely. And I'm glad she said that because you have to keep yourself open for possibilities. You can't just say, I like Demetrius and boom, that's it. No, you have to get to know other people, go on dates and get to know more, you know, other people and see who else you may have a connection with. You may have a better connection with somebody else. Somebody need to explain that to Troy or Tori or whatever the hell his name is. In her confessional, she said her date with Donovan is one of the best dates she's been on. And then she had to go into saying, she said that she would probably sleep with him if she had more drinks. Anyway, Eric said that Sabrina and him um, connected on many different levels. He said he definitely wanted to go out with Sabrina again. On the date with Carmen, she asked him about his ideal woman. She told him he is, she told him that she is competitive. They talked about um, their kids and he surprised her with a birthday dessert. I guess it was her birthday. And, you know, the dessert had, um, had a, um, a little candle in it. And that was very, that was very nice. That was a very nice gesture. And he fed her some of the dessert. And they flirted a little bit with each other. And he said there's definitely a little sexual tension between him and Carmen. Next, Eric meets up with the Kia. Hmm. Not Eric. Clifton meets up with the Kia. He claims he has an attraction for her. Um... He said she's on a nine to five attitude and he wants to see who she really is after the daily struggle. How is she on a nine to five attitude and how do you know what she's like at work? Whenever he sees her, it's in this social environment. He's never seen her at work. So why is he saying she's on a nine to five attitude? <sighs> anyway. In her confessional, the Kia said that she knows that Clifton has a connection with Joy, but her and Clifton have a connection too, and she wants to explore it. So Clifton, he feeds her oyster, and even though I don't like Clifton, he's good on a date. He um he stands up when you come in, he gives you good hugs, he gives you compliments, he pulls out your chair for you. He, feed you food, he flirts a little bit with you, he talks to you with respect, and his demeanor is always nice. But I just can't get over that first time at the first mixed up, the way he was dressed. I can't get over that. He looked like he just rolled out of bed and showed up. I guess the first impression is, you know, the first impression sticks with you because I can't get that out of my head in order to like him. Anyway, they talk about her t-shirt business. They talk about roller, um, roller coasters. They talk about bungee jumping. They talk about skydiving. She tells him she, he has a strong connection with Joy and she has a strong connection with Eric. But before she could continue, he said, I have a strong connection with you too. And that's a lie. He don't have no connection with her. He does not have a romantic connection with her. And then they talk about everybody being fair game. And I wish they would explain this to um to, to Tori because he just does not understand that he needs to start dating other people, talking to other people, and see who who else he may have a connection with. In his confessional, Clifton said him and Akia have a certain sexual energy. I think that's a lie. They don't have no energy, no no sexual energy. The sexual energy he has with um, Joy is 100. The sexual energy he has with the Kia is negative zero. He don't have no, connect, no sexual connection with her. Oh, next up is that damn Paul. Oh, my gosh. 
Another one I don't like. He sets up a date with Joy. He said he likes talking with her, but hasn't spent much time with her. And I don't think he can handle Joy. I really don't think he can handle her. Even though I'm not a fan of hers, I just don't think he can handle her. Anyway, Joy shows up. They hug hello. They sit down and they can't decide if it's um, if it's their first date or not. Or if they said they had a first date or not. And I really don't care. They talk about their connections and they act. He asked her what made her so boldly kiss Clifton. What is the problem? She kissed Clifton in a truth or dare game for about two seconds. What's the big deal? She didn't give him any tongue. She just kissed him. That was it. What's the big deal? Anyway, she told Paul that she has been dying to kiss Clifton. And I'm pretty sure that's not their first kiss. Paul told her that kissing Clifton put people on notice that that's her favorite person. And what's the big damn deal? When they deliberate with Tommy, Clifton always say that Joy is his number one. When she deliberate with the women, she always say, no, when they the men deliberate with the with Tommy, they all Clifton always say Joy is his number one. When the women um deliberate with Tommy, Joy always say Clifton is her number one. So what's the big secret? Um, so Joy is, she's straight up with Paul. She said she is ready to get to the part of the process where she can um, just focus on the person that she likes, which is Clifton. So they, they high-five each other and they decide to be friends because he knows that that's who she wants, Clifton, and he is no chance for him. There was no chance for him anyway, whether or not she liked Clifton or not. Nobody likes Paul, but that damn stupid Tina. Anyway, I shouldn't call her stupid, but damn. If she wasn't there, Paul would have been gone. Okay, Laverne sets up a date with Ace. He said he has a strong connection with both Ace and Joy. Um, he said Joy is the female version of him. She's outgoing and she's loud. He said Ace is a little bit more peace and calmness. So Ace shows up. They hug hello. He gives her a compliment. And he gives her a gift. Wow, that was really nice. What happened to the um to Laverne, the regular Laverne? Where did he go? Maybe this is his twin brother Levine or somebody. I don't know. And he bought her lotion and he rubbed it on her arm. And I thought that was I like that. I thought it was nice. He put her napkin in her lap for her and he fed her steak. And they chit chat and he claims that they are vibing. But I don't see him for her. I don't see anyone else there for her. I think she should go home. Not that, you know, because I don't like her or anything. I just don't think there's anybody there for her. So the next date is Troy, not Troy, Tori, meets up with Precious. He said when they talk, it's empty conversation. That's a horrible thing to say. So that means your conversation is empty too. If hers is empty and yours, it got to be empty too. She shows up, they hug hello. In her confessional, Precious said that um, Tori was one of her first connection, but he got lost in the saw. He was not one of her connection, no. They had something in common. They both didn't grow up with their mother, and that was it. That's the only tie they had with each other. They didn't have a connection. Anyway, Troy, Tori, why do I want to call him Troy? Because Troy, I don't know, that's how his name is spelled. Anyway, Tori is flirting with Precious, and he wants a connection with someone so badly because he doesn't have any a connection with anyone else but Sabrina. So he's trying too hard. I think you should go on a date with Tina. I think him and Tina will be good together. But Tina like old Paul. Why, I don't know. Okay, so they, they talk about their connection. Precious and um, Tori, they talk about their connection. Then Tori flirted with her in a nasty way. It was disgusting to me. I didn't appreciate it at all. And Precious was smiling, but I can tell that she was uncomfortable too. She didn't care for his disgusting flirting. So they decide to stop flirting and she asks him a question. Instead of answering the question, he ignores it and orders shots. And then he awkwardly force himself on her and kiss her. 
Sabrina hurt him so badly that he's trying his best to pretend like it doesn't phase him. <laughs> so uh, Precious is trying to be serious now because she was almost eliminated. So she's trying. She used to be a flirt, but now she's not flirting anymore. Now she's trying to really talk to people and get trying to get a, you know, be serious with them. And um, Tori is just being an ass. He's just being disgusting to me. And you could tell she's not enjoying his flirting at all. She She's smiling, but it's like an awkward smile on her face. In his confessional, he said he's only interest, interested in Sabrina. Because he's not having a connection with um, Precious. He's being disgusting, and he's forcing this disgusting kiss on her, and taking shots, and just being ugh, gross. Anyway, it's time for them to deliberate with Tommy. And at this point, I haven't seen the end of the show. I'm just watching the show and taking notes. So I'm going to say who I think is going to be in the bottom two. I think definitely Precious is going to be in the bottom two because she has no connection with anyone whatsoever. And I'm thinking Ace would be in the bottom two because she only has a connection with, um, what's his name? With Laverne. And I don't think Laverne really like her like that. I think Laverne is using her to get to the end because she's so sweet and gullible. So I think the two bottom ones is going to be a Precious and Ace. And I think Precious is going to go home because no one has a connection with her whatsoever. So that's my prediction. So, um, so Eric tells the men that he chose to take Carmen on a date. He also said he liked the Kia. He said, um, his lineup has shifted from the Kia Basically, it has shifted from the Kia to Carmen. Now, Carmen is his first. He's too finicky for me. For two weeks straight, it was the Kia. And now, one date, it's now um, Carmen. And he's known Carmen for all these years. How come he didn't hook up with her then? That doesn't make any sense to me. He said she... Um... Okay, so... um. Yeah, Eric switched from uh, the Kia to Carmen. So now Carmen is, is his number one. So now Clifton, he tells them that he, his second choice, second date, um, second choice date was with the Kia. He said she let her hair down and he got to see a different side of her. Demetrius said he went out with Tina. He said they had a lot in common and she shifted some things. Paul let, um... Demetrius know that he has a strong connection with Tina. So he's like basically telling him, hey, don't go there. She's mine. That's what he's basically saying. Um, Donovan told them that he had a good time with Sabrina. He said that he said their date was romantic and that they are both from the same place. I think it was California. He also said that he had a date with Carmen and she was definite and she will definitely keep you on your toes. He said the Kia is fun and driven and she is pretty. Laverne said he went out with Ace. He said he had a great date, great conversation. He said she is peace, she is calm. She could be one, she could be the one he can build a life with. He said they are looking past the process and planning holidays together. Um so Donovan asked him if he bought a ring yet. And Tommy told um Laverne, that, you know, you were supposed to take out your second choice. And he's told Tommy that um, Ace was his second choice. Joyce was his first. But now that he's been with Ace, she has moved up to his first, which is a lie. He liked Joyce, but he knows now that Joy likes Clifton, so he has no choice, no no, ch no chance with um, Joy. So he settled on Ace, and Ace is gullible and sweet and nice, so he thinks he can ride her all the way to the end. Because last week when he was... When he thought he was going to get eliminated, he goes, I'm not going anywhere because he has a plan to get to the end. And his plan is Ace. Um, so Laverne, Laverne decides to give the guys advice. He said, told them not to be afraid to say who they want, who is their number one. Eric said he don't need no advice. <laughs> And then Demetrius tried to jump in, but Laverne cut him off. 
uh, he didn't, Vern did not appreciate being um, interrupted. In his confessional, Donovan said he is not going to be bullied into choosing somebody right now. Nobody was trying to bully you. He's just trying to say, you know, you should, you know, lock down on who is your favorite. That's all he's saying. Tommy asks Tori who is his strongest connection. And of course, he says Sabrina. Demetrius said his strongest connection was also Sabrina. He said it's easy with her. And Tori said in his confessional that he doesn't care about what Demetrius is talking about. He said he knows that Sabrina, um, how Sabrina feels about him. He said he's not worried about anything. <laughs> I think he is worried. But I know they talk, um, you know, when the cameras are off, they have each, each, each other's phone number and they call each other and they text each other. I know they do all that. And they probably even go out with each other when the cameras are off. Um, Tommy asks Demetrius who he is not, who is not holding his attention. And he said, precious. He said, she talked to him on a group date only because she almost got eliminated. And he said she was not genu genuine. Donovan said he looked as, at precious as a sister. Donovan said precious is in the friends zone. Tori said Precious as well is his, um, his, there's no connection with her. He said she has good vibes, she's beautiful, but there's no connection. Laverne said Sabrina does not excite or motivate him, and he's not interested in her. <laughs> uh, Paul said Joy, he said he had to tell her that he did not, that he does not have a um, romantic connection. What? 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 Paul said joy. He said joy. He said he had to tell her that he did not connect with her on a romantic level. Which is a lie. That's not what happened. He asked her how come she boldly kissed Cliff, Clifton. And she said she kissed Clifton because that's her number one. And he said you showed your hand. And she said yes I did. He, he said he had to tell her that. He wasn't romantically interested in her. Liar. I tell you, boy. He needs to go to hell on home. Too much of a liar. Um, Eric said it's a friend zone situation for him and Joy. Uh, Troy said when you talk to Joy, you know her no who her number one is. And Tommy tells them to take out one of, to take out the ladies and let one of them know. Um that their journey ends here. He said, be honest and open so that they, the, the woman can grow. So I know um, Clifton is going to go to go for bat, go to bat for Joy because that's who he likes. Um, so Precious, I'm pretty sure Precious is the one leaving. Ain't nobody gonna go, for bat, go to bat for Precious. She has no connection with anyone. See how smart Laverne is? Laverne made sure he tells them that Ace is his number one, so that they would not throw her name out as a bottom two. If Clifton had done that for um, Joy, her name would have not been thrown out either. So if by some miracle, Joy goes home, it's Clifton's fault. So Demetrius meets up with Joy. In her confessional, she said she does not know what Demetrius wants. She said they do not have a romantic connection. So anyway, she meets up with him. Demetrius tells her that he wanted a one-on-one -on -one with her to figure out what they what they have between them. They have nothing between them, so I don't know why he told he told her that. She said, "Do you think there's something between us?" <laughs> She's so rude, but I like how real she is, and I don't like her. But I like how real she is with these guys. He said yes, but he does not know where she stands. So he's saying that they have a connection. No, they don't. I don't know why he said that. He knows there's nothing between them. So she tells him that there's nothing between them. I don't have anything with you. I don't feel anything with you. That's, just, that's what she tells him. And Demetria tells Joy that him and the guys met up. And she pretty much said, hold on. And she took a sip of her drink. And then she drank her drink. And then um, he starts talking again. She, you see how she controls the conversation? I like that about her. But I don't like her. But I like that about her. Um, so Demetrius told her that the guys felt that she, um, was locked in on the person that she had the strongest 
connection with and that she is not seeing anybody else. Demetrius asks her if she's still open to have a romantic connection with anybody else. He told, told her that the guys don't think so. And Joyce said she is tired of the process. She said no one can change how she feels about the one that she likes. Then she turns, she turns on him and she asks him, goes, um, if he really like anyone there. And he said, yes. And, um, she told him that she didn't know if he was there for love. And he, she's being very aggressive and rude towards him. So Demetrius, he jumps in. He's had enough now. He jumps in and he says, so what do you think my purpose for being here is? And she told him he was there to start some shit. <laughs> I cannot stand Joy, but I love how she let these guys know. She put them in their place. Even though he didn't deserve it, he didn't do anything to her or said anything bad to her. She said, you're here to start some shit. <laughs> so he's tired of this now. He doesn't know what to say to her. So he, said, he tells her that the guys um, don't feel like she's ready to end her journey just yet. He told her she's unnoticed, though. In her confessional, she said she is not sorry that she killed the messenger. So now Clifton, he meets up with Precious. And Precious said that she has never been on a date with Clifton before. And she said some, something is telling her that something is not right. Um, so Clifton tell, tells Precious that the guys... Um, get a party person vibe from her and precious tells him that it's a rumor being spread and in her, her confessional precious said that demetrius is spreading is the one spreading that rumor so clifton tells precious that they had a conversation and the um consensus was that her journey has to end today but she was okay with it um next thing we know i'm, thought, I'm thinking that's the end of the damn show Next thing we know, the ladies are meeting up with Tommy. I'm thinking, damn, was this the two-hour show? Um, Because this is new. They're not going to meet up with him until next week. But anyway, ladies meet up with Tommy. And the Kia said there was an incident between her and Eric. I'm like, what? <laughs> she said she does not want to contact, not want to have contact with him anymore. She said he needs to do some reflection and growth on his own away from her. She told Tommy that she no longer wants to date Eric. And then that was the end. They showed up. Um, I guess we'll find out what happened next week. But that's a bummer. And they showed the previews next week of him sitting down talking to um Tommy. Eric sitting down talking to Tommy saying, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or disrespect anybody. But we didn't get to see what happened. I am so curious to know what. Did he say something to annoy her? To piss her off? Anyway, this is the end of my review. I will be back next week with another review. Thank you so much for watching. Princess on the Pillow here. Bye.